prime time local news serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Well, happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to another edition of prime time local news. Connor Chan and Abby St. John here. Lots on the go today in terms of local content for you, including the question of the day coming up later on in the show. What kind of signature topping or interesting topping, I guess, would you put on your pizza? There's a lot of interesting answers. And I mean, I'm not a crazy guy in terms of yeah. food as anybody that knows me. <laughs> But for you? I'm pretty basic when it comes to pizza. Like the most extraordinary pizza that I'd go for is like a barbecue chicken or That's like it. the spicy pierogi from Boston yeah. Pizza. But I was really, a, a lot of the comments were very unique and um, very interesting and yeah, actually would be good. Absolutely, yeah. And we're going to get to those a little later on the show. But right now, let's send over to Josh Ryan, who's live at the brew house tonight. Thanks very much, guys. When we first arrived here about 30 minutes ago, it was bright and sunny, a perfect summer evening in Lloydminster. Now it looks like we're going to get uh, some of that rainfall coming soon within the next two hours. Uh, by then, hopefully, we'll have all of our interviews done indoors and be able to enjoy the pregame for Raptors versus Warriors game six. Uh, the first time, really, that basketball has taken over the town of Lloydminster and uh, we're looking forward to covering it the rest of the evening. First, back to you guys in studio. An uncrackable mystery for over 40 years had seemed unsolvable until recently, and our Jasmine King has more on the story of a safe that was never thought to be opened. The Vermilion Heritage Museum, which started as a high school, turned into a museum with one unique item, a safe that had been moved around from a hotel and a restaurant and then finally ended up at the museum in 1989 where no one could solve it for 40 years, which prompted them to try and come up with some creative solutions. We had one person come with a doctor's stethoscope and tried to listen to it and get the combination, no luck. We had a professional locksmith uh, on the phone and we had a conference call sort of thing and a group of us were around the safe trying to follow her directions and she had three what she called default combinations that uh, one of them should have worked, but nothing worked. As they kept on trying to open the safe, they eventually started giving the chance to the public. At that point, we decided, well, we're pretty well hooked, that's it. But we have had other people try. Anybody's welcome to try. And then it was cracked open by a man who came up with a simple combination. I looked at the dial and I was like, uh, Let's try 20, 40, 60 here. So I gave it a spin there and went uh, 23 times to the right, 42 times to the left, and 61 times to the right, and tried the handle and cracked open. Stephen Mills is from Fort McMurray, and while camping with his family on May long weekend, they decided to make a stop in Vermilion and check out the museum. While getting a tour, Kibble White pointed out the safe. Mills then asked if he could try to open it, and when it opened, he was in much disbelief. My uh, jaw dropped through the to the floor right away and I was like oh my goodness uh, my kids were like we beat the code we beat the code and I stood up and I'm like I'm buying a lottery ticket tonight like, <laughs> I couldn't believe what just happened and then Tom was with me and he was there in total amazement and uh, then we continued to open the door together the speculation for what was inside the safe had been building up over the past 40 years only for it to be something they didn't quite expect there was a small cancelled uh, counter check, no name on it, uh, for $10. And there was a, a little pay slip for an employee, and it listed four hours at such and such and 24 hours at something else. And then there's a pad like a waitress would carry with the orders that she'd taken, and they were all uh, for meals. Mills and his family are planning to head back to Vermilion to meet up with the people at the museum and some residents of the town. We're actually planning an event at the museum for July 21st. Um, I'm gonna be coming back to town uh, along with my mom and dad from Newfoundland are gonna come up and all of our family is gonna be there again. So I'm gonna to get to meet some of the people that I've only talked to over the phone and we're gonna have a celebration and hopefully raise some more money for them. Although the fantasy of what was inside the safe didn't exactly pan out, the story alone is what made it all worth it. If we ever got into the safe, we might find gold bars or maybe a bit of a skeleton or something. They didn't know. And there's nothing of value, but there's something to, things of interest. For Primetime Local News Lloydminster, Jasmine King reporting. 
Canada is taking steps towards a greener future by banning the production of single-use plastics. Straws, plastic forks and takeout containers could be inexistent as early as 2021. And as our Josh Park reports, local businesses are being forced to adapt. According to the Government of Canada, over 8 million tons of plastic waste is funneled into the ocean each year. The most common types being takeout containers, plastic bottles, food wrappers and bottle caps. Well, now the Trudeau government is looking to somewhat put a halt to this plastic problem. Canada will be banning single-use plastic items such as straws, plastic bags and styrofoam containers as early as 2021. This is a shift around responsibility but we've heard clearly from a broad range of businesses that see this as uh, first of all an opportunity for entrepreneurs and startups to get in involved in uh, a, new, uh, uh, a new area. Businesses such as Hubkins here in Lloyd Minster are one of the restaurants that will be forced to make changes. Basic items like plastic forks and straws will soon be outlawed and need to be replaced with more green but also expensive alternatives. For switching over to biodegradable, you know, containers and stuff like that, it's going to be, yes, it's going to be pricey. But I feel like sometimes if it's reusable stuff, you know, if we can make things work, that, you know, it can be beneficial. Although the new law coming into place will force Hubkins to make certain adjustments, the restaurant has already made efforts to combat its plastic waste production. We kind of asked them what they would like, right? So, like, if some people don't really need their cutlery or that bag you know they can just take that container I know it's still a container but yet even a bag can still be you know one step closer the public's reaction to these new laws is mixed so far yeah I think it sounds like a great idea but when you think of literally everything that we use that is single-use plastic it would be a pretty big change single-use plastic is really convenient but um it is better for the environment well I think those straws that A&W has those like new ones kind of suck but I think it's great that he's trying to help the environment. I don't think banning it was necessary. Like necessary. Meals at a restaurant just like this one might look a little different once the new policies are in place. Plastic straws no longer allowed, and they'll need to find an alternative method to take out containers just like this one. Josh Park, Primetime Local News. And now we're going to Josh Ryan, who is live at the brew house. Thunder and lightning on the horizon out here on the west side of Lloyd Minster. Uh, that's more Connor Chan's department for the evening. For now, we're going to focus on the thunder and lightning that will occur in the basketball game between the Raptors and the Warriors. I'm joined now by a lifelong Raptors fan. Well, lifelong as long as the team has been around, certainly, in Josh Lyons, uh, Holy Rosary Raiders women's basketball coach. Um, you've gotten to obviously interact with your players during this time and other kids in the school. Um, has it been a pretty crazy experience seeing basketball actually pick up here in the city it, it's quite remarkable you know like I come from a basketball family where it's it's in our blood but seeing you know, kids that even aren't on basketball teams but just love the sport getting involved you know you see the way more Raptors gear than usual uh, it's it is it's something that you know I, I still remember Vin Sanity in, in 2000 how that sort of struck a chord with with Canadians and and hopefully this this can carry uh, basketball to another level in Canada. Do you think that could then result maybe in a future uh, Andrew Wiggins prototype on the men's or the women's side, you know, the Kia nurse that might come from this area, someone who becomes a Raptors fan through this bandwagon experience for the past month? I mean, I'd love to see that. I mean, every basketball fan in Canada wants to see the, the next big star. Um, and uh, absolutely, you know, uh, representation matters. And having uh, the Raptors on, on the global stage being in the NBA Finals, it, it makes a difference. Little kids, you know, want a basketball now. So it, it, I, I'm optimistic, though I, it remains to be seen. It's a generation away yet. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that generation. Now let's head back to the studio. Connor Chan, are we about to get uh, poured on in the next couple minutes? Currently not poured on in the next minute, few minutes, Josh, but uh, you may want to go inside because over here at the station, it's getting very, very dark very quickly. Over at the Lloydminster Airport, though, they're still seeing some sun and cloud kind of mixed, mostly cloudy. We're still sitting at 23 degrees, though, with that wind, though, very, very minimal with that east southeast four kilometers an hour. It's coming in at records for this time of year. 30 degrees is our warmest on this day back in 2003, while four degrees was our coldest back in 1980. As we take a look at the satellite radar map, there is some activity that's pushing. It looks like very, very quickly 
heavily into our area as we'll see in just a second here. A lot of precipitation activity that's going to translate into the next couple of days because as of right now, we are under a severe thunderstorm watch right now. There is a or warning rather, excuse me. There is a severe thunderstorm watch, of course, up in the St. Paul and up in just outside of Marwain there. But most of this region here, of course, all in yellow here, severe thunderstorm watch, which we could see in the next hour or so. So Josh Ryan Sports, you better be indoors when this happens. So take a look at some of the current temperatures right now. 20 degrees right now for Cold Lake, 21 in Athabasca, 23 in Edmonton and White Court, 17 in Red Deer, 23 is out in Edmonton, 18 for Jasper, 26 degrees in North Battleford currently right now, 24 for Saskatoon, 18 in Melfort, 19 in Prince Albert, and 21 degrees out in Meadow Lake. As we take a look at a little more in-depth look to the regional temperatures, 13 degrees overnight in North Battleford with some cloud coverage, getting 23 degrees tomorrow for the daytime high with some showers expected tomorrow. Overnight in Cold Lake, mostly clear with a few clouds going into tomorrow with a high of 21 degrees with some thunder showers at hand there. And then overnight for us here in Lloydminster, cloudy with so the rain should stop and then it'll carry over into tomorrow when well, not raining. Excuse me. The sun will carry over into tomorrow with a high of 21 with mostly sunny skies and a few clouds. As we look at the next three days, Father's Day weekend, of course, very possibility of some rain there with a 56% chance of some rain for Saturday with the, with the thunderstorms possible and then 21 degrees as well for Sunday with a 68% chance we'll see some rain. But that's a first look at your weather forecast. We'll have more primetime local news after the break. Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Welcome back. Well, the Iron Raven started as a private collection of antiques before growing into a store with objects from multiple different decades. Eric Bay has more on the Wainwright Antique Shop in this week's BioClean Business Bio. Inspired by her fascination with her grandparents' possessions, Leona Copeland turned that interest in antiques into the Iron Raven, which today carries a variety of items. It was brought on as well by um, just visiting my grandparents' places and being interested in what they had, and they didn't have much, but it was always intriguing to see other things. Beginning her personal collection with crystal sugar shakers, Copeland's store now has inventory acquired from auctions and also includes pieces made by people in the area. I take in um, vendor items, the sewing um, that I have three ladies that uh, have brought in their items. I have uh, another vendor that does his handcraft in, and he um, makes uh, items from old piano parts and pieces and uh, I also go to auction when I can. After opening the store just under two years ago, Copeland says the community's support has been vital to help the Iron Raven grow from sugar shakers to where it is today. By bringing their items in, by just saying how nicely set up the store is and Everybody is so encouraging, and I really do appreciate that. It makes, I love coming to work anyways, but it makes it so much better when you hear the positive feedback. The Iron Raven carries a wide range of antiques to ensure there is something to interest everyone. And that's this week's BioClean Business Bio. Business Bio, brought to you by BioClean. Call the Bio Team, 1-833-246-8326. The Disaster Specialists. After a two-year investigation, police say they have cut off a drug pipeline from British Columbia to our province. And Edmonton is home to many of the alleged suspects. Global's Kendra Slagowski has more on Project Elder. Police say everybody has a boss and police allege Neil Kravitz from Vancouver was the brains of this operation, sending drugs like cocaine, meth and fentanyl from BC to Alberta. Uh, we believe that Mr. Kravitz was the head of the snake and, and we have disrupted uh, significantly impacting their ability to operate. Project Elder stemmed from an Edmonton drug ring back in March 2017 and how this so-called drug pipeline worked 
isn't anything new. Investigators say drugs were stashed in vehicles, but this was more sophisticated. Police found hidden compartments in five vehicles that looked factory made and were very difficult to detect. Alert says the drugs were making their way to Edmonton and Calgary, then fanning out from there. And this is just one shipment police nabbed, totaling about $2 million. These are not your, your uh, street level uh, addicts that are are dealing drugs to uh, feed their own habit. These are sophisticated business people who are enriching themselves uh, at the expense of our communities. Project Elder just wrapped up last week, resulting in nearly 60 charges. Kendra Slagoski, Global News. And now we're going to take a look at your stock market prices for today. restore more than just property. We restore hope. When disaster strikes, call the one that can make it right. First General Services, your property restoration experts. Welcome back. Today, Foremost cut the ribbon on their new grain bin line, officially marking their expansion into the agriculture market. Eric Bay has more on Foremost diversification in this week's Ag Report. Production is already rolling as Foremost is constructing the company's first grain bins at its Lloydminster location, a move that was motivated by the economic downturn. So, like I said to everybody today, it's, it's going to fill unused capacity for us that was left idle from the downturn in the oil industry. Um, the ag industry is, is typically not on the same cycle as the oil industry, so it's going to really level out the production at our facility here. Mayor Gerald Albers was on hand for the ceremony and says adapting is something Lloyd Minster businesses have had to resort to in recent times. I know there's machine shops here at Foremost and other businesses in town that have certainly looked at diversifying as best they, as they can, either into agriculture, looking at markets outside of agriculture, outside of oil and gas, wherever that opportunity. And I guess when you're put to the wall as we've done, been through the decrease in oil prices, people have been very resourceful. Despite the new player in the market, farmers don't need to worry about any changes in acquiring bins. We work through dealers and the dealers um, take in market all throughout Western Canada here and take and sell the product to their friends, their neighbours, the people around them that they have built relationships with. So we partner up with the dealers and we service them and make sure that they have the product that they need when they need it. Um, we've also added a transport division to this as well too to be able to haul and deliver bins right directly to the farmer's yard. Lloyd Minster is currently the only location where grain bins are being built, but expansion is planned for Grand Prairie. Eric Bay, Primetime Local News. This Ag Report is brought to you by the Lloydminster Co-op Agro Centre. Depend on them for product, tools and expert advice. Shop at your local Lloyd Co-op Agro Centre with branch locations in Lashburn and Neilburg. And that's all for Ag Sports is next, but first here's a look at your Ag prices. Every member of the City Centre Autobody team has been through extensive training. We're constantly upgrading our team's education to reflect current collision repair technique. Lloyd Minster's track success wasn't limited to grades 10 through 12 over the weekend. Bishop Lloyd Middle School took home two medals in Moose Jaw courtesy of Wyatt Rodwell and Dax Howery. Rodwell jumped 5.89 meters in Midget Boys long jump to finish with a bronze medal, narrowly missing on I second. I feel like I could have jumped better, uh, but it is what it is and it was, it was pretty rewarding to get third. In Midget Boys shot put, Dax Howry finished at 13.33 meters for a silver medal, but he feels that more timing and training would have resulted I I in gold. I a bit more during the time that I had before provincials to try and get first place. Fundamentals like legs, hips, good finish. Bishop Lloyd had four other athletes compete in Moose Jaw. 
Four weeks remain in the Lloydminster Ladies Softball League as tonight features key mashups between two Bantam Liner teams and the Senior Liners and the Lloydminster Edge. The Edge continued to make the push for league champion more interesting since joining just a few years ago. There's a group of ladies that kind of wanted a little bit more recreational because we're all moms and we're all busy and so we created a new team to build the league a little bit and add another one in there. Turcotte says since adding the team, interest in the league has continued to grow, particularly after graduation. I think it's great to continue ball and be able to keep playing at the stage of life that we're in and not just have to be done when you're 18 or 19 and graduating, right? So this is nice that ladies into their 30s and 40s or whatever can keep playing and keep the game going out here. And we can show the young girls that they can do that too when they come back and they can see us play. The Edge and the Senior Aligners game kicks off at 9 p.m. And now we're going to Josh Ryan, who is live at the Brew House. Back here in the Canadian Brew House, joined by the co-owner, Tyler Harvey. Um, Tyler, it's been a crazy month uh, for your restaurant, as well as others in this city. Um, have you ever had this much excitement or patronage for a basketball game? Uh, not for a basketball game, no, not at all. Usually uh, Lakeland will come down and uh, support uh, for some of the games, but I mean for us to, to fill up as we have the last few games, um, I, I would say this has been the best for business as far as N the NBA is concerned. So, And I've, I've heard from some of the servers as well, you don't normally get this many people out on even a Monday or a Wednesday or a Thursday like tonight. Well, I can't say for Wednesday. I mean, wing nights, we're always busy. But uh, yeah, for like a Monday, uh, Thursday, it's absolutely fantastic for business. So it's, it's helped us out a lot. And uh, outside of business, I mean, it's been a lot of fun. And uh, too, as well, you see more people dressed up, I think, more than ever before, even more than some Oilers games. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in uh, Lloyd, there's, you know, uh, quite a big, diverse uh, group of fans. You got Oilers, Calgary, Montreal, you name it. So, um, uh, but I mean, as far as uh, basketball goes, uh, we only have the one team. So everyone's here and they're supporting the, the only Canadian team in the league. And now you are holding something very special. We might as well just get into now. That's a Vince Carter classic jersey. Um, you were telling me that was the last one you could find. Yeah, right. Uh, we gave we we ordered four jerseys, gave away the last one at the last game, and uh, so I was scrambling around looking on the internet. Uh, drove to Edmonton looking for a jersey, and uh, we found we found the last one, and uh, turned out to be a vintage. And we're gonna, as long as the Raptors win tonight, we're gonna give away this jersey this evening. And of course, that is the possibility of uh, the next game being on a Sunday. Is there a part of you that kind of hopes you could get that game seven for more business? I guess. Uh, knock on wood, um, they're going to win tonight, so we don't have to talk about that. But if it ends up having to be that way, and uh, we have another game on Sunday, then you know, uh, bring it on. The busier it is, the more fun it is, and it's great for business as well. Perfect. We'll be back here at the Canadian Brew House. Again, people have a chance to win that Vince Carter jersey if they show up to enjoy the game here at the Brew House. First, let's head back into studio. Talk to Connor Champ. All right. Thanks very much, Josh. It's starting to pour out there in case you haven't had a chance to look outside. Very dark clouds as well as some thunderstorms possibly coming very soon. 18 for us here at Lloydminster, 18 in Bonneville, 23 in Edmonton, 22 for Vermillion, 23 on Wainwright, 28 for Provost and Macklin, 26 in North Battleford and 22 for St. Walberg right now. Other Saskatchewan temperatures, 19 in Lalosh and Buffalo Narrows, 22 out in South End, 24 degrees for Uranium City as we shift over. 22 degrees out in Slave Lake, 20 degrees in Fort McMurray, 23 in Grand Prairie right now as we shift over to Southern Alberta, 30 degrees in Lethbridge, 33 in Medicine Hat, 25 in Coronation, 16 in Calgary, and 22 in Swift Current, 29 for Regina, 27 degrees out in Moose Jaw. As we take a look at temperatures for tomorrow, 21 degrees for us will be the daytime high. Now for tonight, there is still a possibility that we could see that some rain transferring over into that as well as into the weekend, which is, of course, Father's Day weekend. So 21 degrees for us is the daytime high tomorrow, as well as in Mar Wayne, Maidstone, Bonneville, and Cold Lake. Edmonton sitting at 20 degrees. Vegreville also sitting at 21. 21s out in, uh, as well as in Wainwright. So here is the next four. 40 hours right now, so we're seeing that rain right now. And over the next little bit here, we could possibly see some strong wind gusts as we can kind of hear from outside our building. Very it's starting to get a little heavy right now. As you can see, that greenish area here at most of it's going to be in the Saskatchewan. And then by Saturday, we still possibly could see some rain over the next couple of days, but 
like I said, possible a lot of strong wind gusts and possibly hail for today as well. As we take a look at the seven day forecast really quickly here, 21 degrees for Saturday as well as Sunday with a 56% chance of some thunder showers as well as 68% uh, chance of some rain for Sunday. 24 degrees on Monday where it should clear up. Then we go back to the rain again on Tuesday with a 21, per, 21 degrees the daytime high and a 76% chance. 23 on Wednesday and 22 on Thursday to wrap up the seven day forecast. That's a look at your seven days. We'll have more primetime local news after the break. And now we're going to go to Josh Ryan, who is live at the Brew House. Well, things are starting to get a little busier here in the Canadian Brew House. Game six between the Raptors and the Warriors, which will take place on CITL immediately following this cast. So as soon as you're done watching the news, uh, you get right into the thick of things. About 10 minutes or so after seven is when the official first tip off will happen. You have announcements and everything before that as well. Uh, very exciting. It's more than 6 million Canadians uh, in terms of total views were watched uh, for Game 5. It reached apparently 12 million households. That's how much reach this series has had for basketball fans in Canada. They're expecting similar, if not greater, numbers for tonight. And the Brew House uh, tends to be a part of that. going to fill up here in town. Back to technical problems there due to the heavy winds and hail out there. But yes. quickly with our question of the day segment, just before we wrap up the segment here, what was like the most interesting topping you had for some pizzas? A lot of interesting comments here. Uh, dried peaches was one. Yeah. Um, avocado. I don't get people at avocado these days. It seems like love anybody. Avocado. Uh, cool Ranch Doritos. I can get behind those because yes. I love Cool Ranch. There was KFC popcorn chicken on yeah. there. And I just want to say props to that guy for thinking of that because that is genius. That is very good yeah. indeed. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> we're running out of time on this segment. Well, let's take a look at our Pets of the Day segment right now. So this is Jersey. Adorable. Very, very cute very here cute. with his ball. This is Coda enjoying Aww. the sun. Adorable. Next. Next up, we have Smokey and Bandit. Oh, just cuddling, cuddling and very adorable. It. Next up, we have Max and Sadie. Aww, big two dog, little sizes. dog. I love it. And last but not least, this is Oakley enjoying oh, her pool very outside. Cute. Just well, chilling. If your pet was shown on today, you're automatically entered to win a Lloydminster Pet Pad gift card. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad. Today I'm joined here with Charlene. She's the co-chair of the LEAP committee and today we are going to be talking about the elder abuse walk that is coming up Saturday and we're going to be talking just a little bit about the awareness um, of elder abuse and you know what um, people can do to help you know decline it because it is a real issue that's going on in um, our country and all mm -hmm. over the world. So thank you for coming in and explaining um, the walk and um, I guess let's start out what is elder abuse like how how um, how does it look well elder abuse is really um, you know any type of situation that's occurring for somebody who's a senior uh, where trust is being uh, broken and that causes harm or any kind of perhaps distress to a senior medically so it can have very many different forms you can have you know financial abuse uh, physical neglect sexual abuse anything that affects their human rights, um, those different types of things for sure. And why do you think that something like this goes on? Um, you know, it's hard to say. Obviously, you know, our seniors, um, as they're, you know, growing older, are a vulnerable population as well. So they might not always have the opportunities to defend themselves or, you know, are in fear of whoever it is that's uh, abusing them. But, um, you know, certainly they're just that vulnerable population that um, this does occur and often goes um, undetected or doesn't always get uh, brought forward or reported. Um, some of the stats show that it's probably the most unreported uh, forms of abuse that's happening to this demographic for sure. Which is just horrible. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's just very sad that this thing this happens mm -hmm. um, but so you are um, putting on a walk this Saturday um, what can people expect 
from uh, coming out and uh, participating. Yeah, so no, it's uh, one of our first events of many that we're hoping to do this year to bring some awareness and education to elder abuse. So June 15th is actually the World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. So there's gonna be plenty of activities happening all across the world um, to kind of bring this forth to our community. So what we had decided to, together as a committee um, was to do an awareness walk. So on June 15th at 10 o'clock, we'll be joined by Mayor Elbers, who's going to be doing an opening message for us. And then people will be able to join us on the walk around the pond. And and uh, as they're walking around the pond, those different forms of abuse that we talked about are going to be set up on information boards so that people can kind of recognize maybe what those signs look like for each one of those. And then also just some information about, um, you know, what people can do to support somebody who they think that might be experiencing this. Um, maybe what are some of those things that keep people from identifying that this is happening to them. So really it is about just bringing some awareness to the issue and how we as a community can help support those individuals in our lives. So um, the day is just, the morning is going to be really short. It'll go from 10 to 11.30. Um, like I said, we'll have our walk. We'll have some refreshments there afterwards. And then we'll just have some closing remarks. And uh, it really will be for anybody of all ages. So we are hoping that you know families will come down. Um, those with mobility issues, we're actually going to have a couple golf carts on hand. So you know if they are unable to walk around the pond, we'll have uh, volunteers there to drive them around so that they can also experience. And then um, yeah, anybody that might have some issues with transportation coming down to the park, uh, we're offering some free transportation but they do need to phone the FCSS at the city to make those arrangements before the end of tomorrow. So, And really quickly before we wrap up, if someone wants to get involved to help or um, you know participate in any way, how can they do so? Well, if they want to, you mean for the walk yes. itself? Yeah. Um, certainly, they can give us a call. Um, they can, you know, either call the city, you know, the FCSS area, or they can give me a call at uh, the Interval Home. Um, certainly, if they want to be able to come down and do that, there is no registration, so we're just hoping that people will come out and hopefully we'll, the rain will hold off for a little bit for us tomorrow, but just even coming down and meeting us and asking questions and uh, finding out other ways that they can maybe join. Okay, well, perfect. Thank you so much for coming in and explaining. And the walk is happening this Saturday on June 15th, so go and check it out. Thank you. Thank you. This weekend, it's Father's Day, and we've got a lot of great activities that you can do with Dad, including coming up on Saturday, Just Cruisin' is hosting their annual show and shine. This is their 12th annual, and it's free for you to head out and take in this fantastic show. You'll be able to check out all the sweet rides starting at 10 a.m. Plus, they've got a kid zone. There's going to be bouncy castles this year. There's also going to be valve cover racing. There's going to be charity barbecues. A whole lot to do for the entire family at the 12th annual Just Cruisin' Show and Shine at the Service Sports Centre on Saturday. Give your dad a really neat view of the City of Lloydminster and surrounding area. Coming up on Sunday morning, Father's Day, with the annual Father's Day Pancake Fly-In, Drive-In Breakfast. It's out here at the Lloydminster Airport, and you can take Dad up in an airplane, thanks to the folks with the Lloydminster Flying Club and Border City Aviation. Give Border City Aviation a call to get all the details on the plane rides that are going to be happening on Sunday morning. You're welcome to join them just for breakfast as well. They'll start serving up at 8 a.m. So head for the Lloydminster Airport with Dad on Sunday. Coming up on Sunday evening, Sean Mendez is going to be in Edmonton, and we want to help you get ready for the show by giving you a chance to win a copy of his latest album, and it includes the hits In My Blood and Lost in Japan. If you want to win, it's really easy. Just email your name and daytime phone number to tv-contest at stingray.com. We want to say thanks to John at Universal Music Canada for setting us up with the music. And now is the time for you to get your team together for a three-on-three -three charity road hockey tournament. It's coming up next month. It's in support of the Snowflake House Respite Foundation. And if you want to get registered, email ryank at lagauto.ca. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Clegus, and that's what's happening.
today I'm joined here with Jennifer McEwen. She is a personal trainer and today we're going to be talking just about some tips and tricks that she has um, getting fit and ready for the summer. So thank you for coming in and uh, talking with me. Absolutely. Um, I Thanks guess so. let's first start off by saying how did you get involved in you know personal training? Uh, well, I kind of hit a low spot in my own personal life and had a sort of wake-up call one day and just decided, you know what, enough is enough. Let's get out there and try to be more self-positive. And, um, yeah, so just that was pretty much it. I had a little wake-up call and, <laughs> and found my calling, I guess, to do that. And do you, do you think that, you know, staying fit and healthy really helps improve a person's, you know, self-confidence and, you know, how they're feeling on the inside? Absolutely. Um, when you are exercising, you release endorphins. You've heard this a thousand times, but you've heard it because it's true. Um, it's, you know, it's a saying to, uh, to exercise will make you happier, or people who exercise, you know, they're in better moods, and it's true. It's true all the way around. So, you know, being fit and, and being healthy, eating healthy, it all, it all ties in together. So. so if a person, you know, who isn't really, you know, going to the gym regularly, but they want to come and get uh, classes with you personally, what, what, what do you have them starting out, like a complete beginner doing? Like what's your workout um, for them look like? Well, I don't do anything cookie cutter. So if you're gonna come to me, I'm gonna ask you your personal history. I'm gonna ask you about surgeries or anything that's sort of hindering you in the past. And then I'm gonna build a plan based around that for you specifically. If we do a group training session, then that's a little looser. We'd, we'd start off with some basic moves, everything body weight, whether the movement um, you know, has a bar or a plate or a machine or not, it wouldn't be, there'd be no weight at the beginning. I wanna see how you move. I wanna make sure you're not gonna hurt yourself. And then of course we go up from there. Yeah. And with training and being at the gym, you know, that's very important. But, you know, what would you recommend, you know, uh, apart from the gym, like healthy eating and all like diet um, type, what, what would you recommend people do to maintain what they're doing at the gym? Okay, well, as a general rule of thumb, uh, you want to have plenty of water. That's, again, said a million times. You've heard it a million times because it's true. So plenty of water, plenty of sleep. Um, you are what you eat, so let's eat healthy food. Let's eat you know, good, solid, clean proteins. Um, stay away as much as you can from processed foods. I know it's out there and it's tempting, and you have to live too, right? So yeah. be a little forgiving. If you, know, you fall off and go to that fast food place, that's okay. Um, if you have a specific goal in mind, maybe you do a little bit of research and get someone behind you to achieve that goal, like a trainer or a coach or something like that because you know they are who they are they get paid what they get paid for a reason they have that education and they can help you achieve that so and if someone wants to um, you know have you as their personal trainer how can they go about um, doing like registering or um, getting involved with your, your classes and your training right um, the easiest way is to contact me on social media probably through Facebook Jennifer McEwen or my Instagram is jcat35 uh, if you message me I answer everybody um, if it goes to that weird other folder sometimes you know I do check that pretty regularly so since that Maxim cover girl thing I've gotten a few <laughs> sketchy messages I've had to kind of filter through so it yeah. might take me a little longer but I promise I will answer you if I see it um, otherwise, you know, there's always my cell phone or whatever, just local people know who I am. You can ask around, I guess. And what can people, I know we kind of touched on, you know, you're not a cookie cutter type of trainer, but mm -hmm. you know, what can people really expect when they, um, like even when they're leaving your class, what can they expect to feel or, um, or do? Well, I hope that um, anyone I have trained feels accomplished and feels proud of themselves. I'm not one of those, you know, scream at you, over you, yelling <laughs> like that's not me. So if that's what you're looking for, not, not a good match. But I will encourage you. I will push you. And, uh, yeah, I just hope that you feel accomplished and proud of yourself. At the end of the day, if you don't love what you're doing, you're not going to come back. And that doesn't benefit anybody. So. All right, well, thank you so much for coming in and sharing um, this experience. I know it's always very important, especially during the summertime, to uh, get fit and, you know, to stay healthy because ultimately you'll feel 100% um, better. So thank you for coming in. Thanks so much for having me, Abby. <laughs>